what I want to look at now are integrals of the form cosine mx, cosine nx, where m is not equal to n, and both are not equal to zero. So the ideas we're going to use here are going to apply to a product of two sines with different m's and n's, or a sine and a cosine where we have different m's and n's too. Here's the answer, but the answer won't be so important as the methodology. One thing to note though, what happens in our final answer? The m and the n are going to show up as a sum and as a difference. So let's take a look at how we come about this crazy looking formula here. What's my idea? I'm going to use the sum rule for cosine. So recall, if I have a sum of angles inside of a cosine, what do we do? We're going to take each angle, find their cosines, multiply, then we're going to take the sines of each angle, multiply, take the difference. All right, once I have this, I'm going to do the difference of the angles inside a cosine, which we can get from the same rule as long as we remember how minus sines work inside of cosine and sine. So remember, cosine of minus nx is just equal to cosine nx. Cosine's an even function, so minus sines on the inside just disappear. Sine is an odd function, so a minus sign on the inside is just going to pull out as a minus sign. So if I use the same rule applied to mx and minus nx, I rewrite the formula and note that the minus nx that would appear here is going to come out and cancel with this minus sign, and then the minus nx we stick inside of this cosine just disappears. So here are these two expressions that I have, and when I add them together, notice what happens. If I add these together on this side, the sine terms are going to go away, leaving me with twice mx cosine nx. On this side, I'm just going to take the sum of each of these, and you notice when you divide both sides by 2, we wind up with cosine mx cosine nx equals 1 half, okay, the sum angle plus the difference angle, both inside of cosines. This, we know how to take the any derivative of, so this is the point. Before, we had no idea how to take the antiderivative of this, but using this identity, I've reduced it to two things I can definitely do the antiderivative of. Okay, so remember, how do I do cosine of a number times x? Well, I let that u be equal to m plus nx, and then that's just going to amount to flip the m plus n over, make this a sine because sine is the antiderivative of cosine, and then it's just sine of m plus nx, similar here. So that's how I get this formula. Again, I don't recommend memorizing the formula. It's better to memorize the procedure that gets you there. Okay, let's look at an example so this is a little bit more sensible. So, as I mentioned before, this is going to apply later on. If you ever take a course on Fourier analysis, the idea is going to be we will want, if I take the integral from 0 to 2 pi over one of these types of integrals, we'll want it to be 0. So let's check that in just one case. So I'm going to do cosine 3x, cosine 2x, dx. m is 3, n is 2 here. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the sum, so it's going to give me a cosine 5x. Then I'm going to take the difference. That's going to give me a cosine x. Note, it won't matter what order you do the difference in, because this is cosine. If I do it in the wrong order, it just throws a minus sign in. Because cosine is even, it doesn't make a difference. It goes away. So I'm left with this. And then when I do the u substitution for this guy, it's just the same as dividing by 5. So I'll wind up with sine of 5x over 5. Here I have a sine of x, and I pull the half out. And then we're going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Well, if I put 0 in the sine, and it doesn't matter what the coefficient is here, it's going to go to 0. Sine of 0 is always 0. So nothing will come out of the second term. For the 2 pi, note we're going to have sine of 10 pi and sine of 2 pi. Okay, any multiple of pi gives me 0 for sine, so we're going to get 0 here too, and so my final answer is going to be a 0. So what we have here is this integral is 0, and that's good if I'm looking at Fourier series.